everybody and welcome to another third party Transformers review. Today I'm taking a look at the Saurus Real line from Fans Project, this figure being Dino Ishii. These particular figures are based on the Transformers Victory Dino Force team who form Dino King. This particular figure is based on Kaku Ryu, the rather simplistically minded Triceratops. Taking a quick look around the box, we've got some really nice, big, vibrant pictures on here. I love the flame burst coming from the bottom. On the side there, you've always got a very uh, kind of unique toys, troll-esque look to him there. And on the back there, we've got him in his bot mode, this kind of beast-like mode, and some nice poses. And then, of course, him in his combined form in the... Dino King or uh, possibly Monstructor, although Monstructor was the same mould in the original but obviously different colours, different market. All in all, rather nice. It does have a flip up Velcro window which is kind of what we're getting from Fans Project these days. And there he is, all ready for us in his bot mode with some heavy weaponry. So without further ado, let's crack him open. Here we have him out of the package. I've got him in his full weapon mode with his feet, shoulder, cannon, guns on his back there. My first impressions, he feels very nice to the hand. He's made of a very good consistent plastic, uh, very high quality, which is what I've kind of come to expect from Fans Project. Uh, he's smaller than I was anticipating. He is the largest of this series and he's about the same sort of size as a large deluxe or a small voyager but then again i think the price does reflect that the levels of detailing on him though are absolutely phenomenal that's such a fantastic true victory likeness on him it's outstanding he looks incredible now there's a lot more paint applications on him than there was on his uh, original g1 toy counterpart uh, which is a good thing because he was made up of a lot of white plastic uh, i think it's really good that he still kept the beast mode obviously it was a nice little added feature of the toy and i think it's good that they've transferred that over to their version i just really love that really crystal vibrant red on that visor the thing about this is it, it's made substantially well, but yet they've still managed to paint and highlight all of these details. And there's a lot of complexity going on here and here. A lot of stuff involved for the transformations. And it's all hidden very, very well. And as a result, we have a very robust, very stocky, gorgeous looking robot. I mean, just look at the firearm. We could flip this out like so. It's just pure girth. Now, these sections here, they do detach. They just slide up. It's just a small sliding peg. You do also have the option of sliding these tabs into the shoulders, just on here, so we can tab that in. And now he's got some huge shoulder-mounted cannons. Not a particular fan of this mode. I do prefer them on the back of the arms, but all in all, I think he actually looks a lot better with them completely detached and him just standing there as a big stocky robot with a big gun. This is where he pays off. This is how I have him displayed. This is my favourite look for him. Unfortunately, those combiner ports on the arms are somewhat hideous. Uh, I would like something to cover these up a little bit. It's just, they're just very, very obvious, aren't they? I guess that's the whole idea. You can have those um, cannons shoulder mounted, which does in turn cover up those ports. But I, I feel it does let the mould down slightly. I'm a huge fan of the colours used on this. Really nice contrasting greys there. Goes through to that kind of almost khaki-like green. Then we've got the bluish grey down by the legs there. The shockingly bright white on the feet. And then the nice red accents throughout the toes, the knees, the chest, and then up to the eyes and shoulders. Let's take a look at his articulation. The head is on a ball joint, really nice range of motion up, nice downwards motion and 360 is no problem whatsoever. The arms are on this nice butterfly joint, so it goes in and out. We have a lovely ratchet around the shoulder there, so we can get some really nice dynamic poses. It's actually on a swivel hinge which can lock in 
and out. We have a rotation at the bicep. We have double jointed elbows. That's really nice. I love having double jointed elbows on a figure. It can make such a difference. We have a rotation on the fist. Uh, the fists themselves are actually closed. They're molding in that. There's no pins through there at all. Although there is a kind of a pin indentation there. So I'm wondering if it was originally designed to have a pin. The stomach can move forward slightly and back. Really nice backwards motion there. We do have a rotation at the waist. The legs are on a soft ratchet. They can come out that far, out that far, all the way back. We have an upper thigh rotation. We have a nice deep bend at the knee. We have a ball jointed foot. So we can get forwards and backwards motion and we can get some nice pivoting action as well. Here he is with a vast array of various different figures from different generations. As you can see, he is quite small, but as far as the victory line goes, I mean, I think he scales pretty well with Sabre. That, that's a fairly good comparative height. Now let's get Dino Wishy transformed up into his monster mode. Let's uh, rotate his head. So he's got these kind of screws. <laughs> that's a face. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's the first time I've seen that. Um, right, yes, let's um, pop his head back into this crevice like so. You then want to rotate his arms upwards. And once they're upwards, push back on the hinge and freeze up this kind of grey section here, which then drops the arm right down. Can you see the difference in height there? So we do the same with this side. Rotate the arm upwards and push that hinge back down. And that drops the arms sunken down to the side. Grab the bicep, rotate that around, untab this claw section, rotate the fist section around, and there's now a groove in the back here where we can locate his hand, and then we can just rotate this claw section around. So he's got like digging mole-like claws. Just applying pressure between the nose and the lower jaw, just untab that, and he's now got a scary face. Rotate him around at the waist, like so. Bring these knees up and down, legs up and down, and then rotate the feet around like so. So we've got these gold toes at the front. Now, I really like the beast mode. That's proper, like, grrr, almost Freddy Krueger beast there. Really nice, sharp claws, almost like a praying mantis there with those sections arched forward. The articulation on the arms remains the same, but we do only have a very limited up and down motion on the head. You can literally just go up like so, so we can kind of gallop along. I suppose you could even have it like that, couldn't you? You could have this kind of the feet back and you could have him kind of galloping. And it does move down, sunken into that chest. Uh, the waist still rotates and we still have the same type of articulation on these legs because we basically just reversed the outside of that waist, didn't we? I'm not sure whether these knees, I think they're meant to stay out, I believe, like so. Uh, but it's a good figure. He looks really nasty, doesn't he? Again, though, he is very small in stature, even more so now that he has this very hunched demeanour about him. He's kind of hunched over there and we do lose about a centimeter in height on him. But still, it's still a very, very workable scale, I believe. I think that's still something that could work. Now to get him changed up into the torso section for Dino King from this mode, what you need to do, you need to come around firstly to the back here. You need to open up this back section here. And as you can see this big blue section, that is actually going to form the head. So flip that up. We can close this section back off. That's a fantastic face sculpt. Really, really love that. We can then rotate this head around. <laughs> oh, that looks fantastic. Right, rotate that grey peg back up again until it locates in the top. 
square off this shoulder, so it, this section here is facing forwards, come round to this arm, you want to wrap that round, and there's a groove just in here, that's going to tab in, and there's also this grey tab here, that's going to slide into that section just on the underside there, can you see that? That's going to slide in and locate that in place. Rotate this claw section around and place on the side like so. I've just arched it open these uh, breast sections here so you can see this tab. You can see how that's got to slide into that arm section to lock that into place and then we can pop that back down. Rock this torso section backwards so the legs are at the back. And if you come up to the underside here, you need to just flip down this section underneath. If you come to the underside of the legs, it's a very, very tight fit under here. There's some clearance issues. Basically, this section is meant to just push back. But I find you just have to pull this white section just to one side to enable this section to rock back fully. You now want to fold this leg back in on itself. It's on a sprung hinge there, it will just clear that section, bring that round, these are going to tab in together and we're going to want to rotate this waist section all the way back around. We then rock this torso back and as you can see there, there's a small tab section here and this white clip goes on either side, so that's going to come in, that's going to clip on that side and the same with this side, we're going to push those in and just make sure they tab and retain on both sides and finally just push down on that knee pad section and there we go there we have the upper torso section uh, it does look incredibly nice this needs to flip down it looks really, really good that's a fantastic head sculpt the horn does move up and down now the, what do we get from this we know that the head can move up and down left and right quite freely the arms will plug into these side pegs here we also know we're going to have nice ratcheting shoulder joints. I mean, they are super tight. So that's going to be really, really good. Uh, I think he's probably going to be around the same sort of size as maybe Giant from Make Toys, that sort of size. I think that's perfectly good. just love the detailing on him. I love the expression they've got. And I honestly cannot wait to get the rest in the series. Uh, now, they are releasing the dino shells. Now, unfortunately, the dino shells are sold separately. They're like a huge lump of plastic that's hollowed out, and you can fit your uh, dino inside. I believe the first one is going to be available at TFCon uh, Chicago, uh, which is next month, is it, or November? It's coming this year anyway. That's where you're going to be able to get your first exclusive one. I'm hoping... That if I can't get there myself, I'm hoping they do some sort of campaign where you can buy it or maybe I'll get a friend to pick one up for me. But uh, yeah, that's definitely going to be the first place you can pick one up from. And I can't wait to get them. I know they're nonsense. They're basically just upscaled versions of what we got with the G1 Victory toys. But hey, I need them in my collection. Very, very impressed with this. Honestly, cannot wait to finish him. He's going to look absolutely outstanding. If you're a Transformers Victory fan, this is a must for you. If you're just a fan of your dinosaurs like me, then again, it is a very, very big must. It's going to be an awesome combiner. And once again, Fans Project have pulled off an outstanding figure. Thanks again to the guys over at Kapow Toys for getting this shipped out to me so quickly. And until next time, from myself and the Fans Project Dino King team, Goodbye.